Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Amen. God bless you. To those of you who are watching via live stream, it's good to have you with us this morning here at Grand African Methodist Episcopal Church, Los Angeles. It is our casual Sunday, as you can see. Amen. And it is also our young adult Sunday. And so our young adults will be uh, assisting us in our program this morning. As you can see, our call to worship will be done by Lisa Bridgewater. A slight change. Our prayer will be done by Sister Trinity Costin, and our scripture will be done by Kalika Daniels. Amen. 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 So as we get ready to start this morning, as we do every Sunday here at Grant, we have folks ask me, they said, Pastor, what's that three stand for on your shirt? I said, well, I just made it up. Amen. Amen. And so the three this morning, next Sunday it might stand for something else. But this morning it stands for the great people of Grant. Amen. The great worship that we have and the great God that we serve. Amen. Amen. So let us stand this morning as we start off on this youth Sunday and this casual Sunday. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. to celebration I was glad when they said to me let us go in the house of the Lord our feet shall stand within thy gates O Jerusalem for day thy courts is better than the thousand I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to go out because of the house of the Lord our God I will seek thy good Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord has been spoken to him. Let all the earth be silent before Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This morning's hymn of praise will be What a Wonderful Change in My Life, hymn number 403.
Please bow your head and close your eyes. God, we thank you for bringing us here today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we are sorry for all of our misdoings, but we thank you for being with us in the beginning, in the middle, and for being with us in the end. God, whatever happens this week, whatever happens today, whatever happens tomorrow, we know that you are with us. And we thank you for being with us. And we love you and we praise you and thank you for everything that you have done for us. We pray for a good day and for understanding of the word and for all of those who can't be here today. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. taken from Hosea 14. Please stand and we'll speak. Refrain, you know. <laughs> Return Israel to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. Assyria cannot save us. We will not mount war horses. We will never again say, our gods, to what our own hands have made. For in you the fatherless find compassion. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like a lily. Like a cedar of Lebanon, he will send down his roots. People will dwell again in his shade. They will flourish like the grain. They will blossom like the vine. Israel's fame will not be like the wine of Lebanon. And all, who is wise? Let them realize these things. Who is discerning? Let them understand. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. Hosanna in the highest. Christ our Savior, Savior saith, 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul and mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. be seated. Down. 
At this time, we'd like to acknowledge our visitors. I didn't have anyone registered, but if you are visiting with us, would you please stand and remain standing until you have been welcomed by Pastor Costa. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Welcome to Grand AME Church. It is good to have you with us. And those of you who are watching via live stream, if you are visiting with us for the first time this morning, it's good to have you as well. Please know that if you like what you see, if you like what you hear, you are welcome to make that seat yours. Amen. God bless you and enjoy the service. Okay, I'd like to highlight a few of our <coughs> excuse me, announcements on our bulletin. Church conference today, we will vote immediately following the morning service to advance Steve Swartz and Timothy Costin III to their first year Board of Examiners. First Ladies High Tea, LA Focus will host its 36th annual First Ladies High Tea on Saturday, May 18th. Our own First Lady Karen Costin will be honored. Tickets are priced at $155. If you are interested in attending, please get in touch with the church office. District Conference, April 18th through the 20th, held at New Philadelphia. Mark your calendars, the address is printed in the bulletin. Dementia-friendly worship service, Sunday, April 21st at our 9.30 service. This service is designed to create a welcoming environment for those affected by Alzheimer's and dementia, and well, as well as their caregivers and loved ones. The Courtesy Club is sponsoring its annual Seize Candy Mother's Day sale from April the 7th continuing through April 21st. Please see me or Sister Jackie to place your order. There are other announcements in your bulletin. Please read them and govern yourselves accordingly. Have a blessed week. Annual Missionary Day. That's not printed in the bulletin. It's not on here. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Limp No More, Sisters with a Mission, April 21st at 3 p.m. at Women's Missionary Annual Day, Energized, Committed, will be April 21st at 3 p.m. A light lunch will be served at 1 o'clock. Sister Dr. Sardana Moss will be our speaker. Thank you. Have a blessed week. Grant, how are you this morning? It's a glorious day. God has sent down this liquid sunshine, and we just love it. I do. Okay, we're, I'm on the committee to get everyone into a class. And I finally got it kind of organized. But what I need to know is how many people here did not fill out one of the yellow cards that needs to be placed into a class. I need to see you directly after church in the foyer so I can get your cards and I get you assigned to a class. Okay? Amen. Okay? Amen. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank you so much, Sister Audrey. Um, good morning, Grand Amy Church. Amen, and good morning to all of you who are watching via live stream. God bless you. Good to have everybody here this morning. Uh, the class leaders are important. Let me just piggyback off of that to start. Class leaders are important. That's what keeps you connected uh, to the church. As you can see, there are a lot more of you all than there is me. And uh, there are more besides you, even those of you who are watching via live stream. And so the whole class leader uh, thought is to we break everybody down into groups so if we was in the military y'all would be in squads so that way your squad leader can be in uh, touch with you if you have a surgery if someone passes away in your family if you're just having a bad day then that uh, class leader is there to uh, to talk with you to pray with you to let you know what's going on just to keep you connected to grant and if there's something important that you need the pastor to show up for to uh, relay that back to me. So please make sure that you sign up for your classes. Amen. 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 Also, I want to take this moment. Let me turn on this other mic. All right. There we go. I want to take this moment to say on uh, last, was it last Saturday? This month been going so crazy. Last Saturday, 
uh, you all threw me a birthday celebration and Sister Costin spearheaded it and all the folks from Grant uh, came in and just celebrated. I got a ton of gifts. I did a Facebook post, but I just wanted to let you know in person to every single person here who attended, who helped, who gave me a card with some uh, Bass Pro Shops money in it. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. This is one of my gifts here that I'm wearing this morning. Amen. And so, and so, and I'll model it for you. See there? Woohoo! But thank you so much. And uh, I wish this said I turned three years old or maybe 30 years old, but no, I turned 60. So, uh, but thank God for that. And thank you so much for being there and celebrating with me. So, God bless each and every one of you. Amen. And also, following our, uh, following our service this morning, as you heard, we are going to do that, um, uh, the church conference so that we can pass on uh, Brother Tim and uh, Brother Steve Schwartz in their ministry pursuit, amen. Now, I don't plan on keeping that long, all right, but there's something else that I wanna add in there with you. Uh, we are looking at doing some projects here at the church, and I need your input. So I, while we going through service today, I just want you to think about if we were building something here at the church, what would you like to see? And, and what would you like to see happen here at the church? And I'm gonna get all that, I'm gonna get as much as I can in that 30 minutes that we have during the church conference. We're not gonna build Rome, all right? All right, but we're gonna just get some input from you so that we can take it back to the table and see what we can do to make that a reality, all right? So if you can hang around with us for a little bit, I'd love to hear what the people of Grant have to say about what you would like to see at your church. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, I think that is about it. Sister Costin and Brother Isaiah send their hellos this morning. They both are not feeling well. Either uh, I am immune or they just got weak Im uh, immune systems because we all ate the same food. They got sick and I didn't. Amen. I don't know what that means, but y'all pray for them. They're doing well, they're just recovering, and they thought it would be uh, better, and I did too, that they stay around the house for today. All right, God bless you. Please continue to enjoy this service. Didn't our young, uh, our young adults do great this morning, our young ladies? <laughs> Amen. Great job, and I wanna bring in even more, even more. I wanna get to a Sunday where we have a it would be nice if I could have a 30 and under Sunday. That means everybody, including the preacher, is all 30 and under. I might have to bump it up to 40, I don't know. But, but all the ushers, all the musicians, the preacher, everybody under 40 years old. You know where I'm gonna be? I'm gonna be sitting right here in the front enjoying it, amen, amen. So that's our goal, but we working on it, amen. God bless you, God keep you. Please enjoy the rest of our service this morning. Jesus, 
who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. You don't have to worry. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say,
Amen, church. Amen. Let us give our chorus another hand this morning. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See, we already got our under 30 organist over here. Amen. 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 We we working on it. Over 30. Oh, good, good, good. Good. All right. What about you? Over 30. Under 40? Under 30 for now. Okay. 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 <laughs> amen. God bless y'all. Thank you so much. I'm not even going to ask you, Brother Chris. Amen. <laughs> amen. Good morning, everybody. It is good to have you here with us today in the house of the Lord on this day that we uh, recognize our young adults. Amen. Know that. One of our efforts here at Grant is to bring more young adults into our congregation, not just to bring them in, but to put them to work. Amen, amen, amen. That means being a part of the worship service, being a part of doing everything that we have here. There's a lot of ministries going on. We are a pretty busy church, and uh, I know that when you're around that 20 and 30 year old age you're going to school and you having children and you know time is limited and all that good stuff but I tell you we got to make time for God amen got to find time to make time for God it is so important because not only for you but for your children and your children's children it makes a difference many of us are here right now today are here because our grandparents and great grandparents were in church amen Amen. So God bless you. Those of you who are here this morning, we appreciate the fact that you made it a point to be in church today. Let us bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. And we come before you right now asking you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins, everything that we've done, thought, word, and deed. We ask you right now in Jesus' name to open up our eyes and our ears so that we can hear and see your word. Let us, Lord, draw closer to you. In Jesus' name is our prayer. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you this morning. Uh, this morning we are looking at a book. I don't think we have been in this book before. Amen. This is the book of the prophet Hosea. And we are looking at chapter number 14, verses 1 through 9, which is the in, entire chapter there of um, uh, chapter 14 for the prophet Hosea. And so I'm going to read that to you again this morning from the New International Version of the Bible. The passage reads, Return, Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all our sins and receive us graciously that we may offer the fruit of our lips. Assyria cannot save us. We will not mount war horses. We will never again say our gods to what our own hands have made. For in you the fatherless find compassion. I will heal their waywardness and love them freely. For my anger has turned away from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like a lily. Like a cedar of Lebanon, he will send down his roots. His young shoots will grow. His splendor will be like an olive tree, his fragrance like a cedar of Lebanon. People will dwell again in his shade. They will flourish like grain. They will blossom like the vine. Israel's fame will be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more have I to do with idols? I will answer him and care for him. I am like a flourishing juniper. Your faithfulness comes from me. Your fruitfulness comes from me. Who is wise? Let them realize these things. Who is discerning? Let them understand. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. Amen, amen. Our message for this morning comes from the title, You Can't Walk in two different directions. Amen. You cannot walk in two different 
directions. Now, this may be one of them out sermons. I don't know. I don't know. But y'all just be ready. Amen. There's a well-known English proverb. Everybody knows it. You've probably heard it many, many times uh, within your life that says you can't have your cake and eat it too. Amen. Amen. Y'all know it. The proverb literally means that you cannot simultaneously retain the possession of the cake and eat it too. Once the cake is eaten, it's gone. The proverb can be used to say that one cannot have two incompatible things. The proverb's meaning is similar to the phrases, you can't have it both ways, or you can't have the best of both worlds. In Christianity, it is similar to something that we call hypocrisy, which by definition is the practice of claiming to have moral standards or belief to which one's own behavior does not even conform. Basically, we say one thing and we do another, amen? And that's why we're here, though. That's why those of you who are watching online, that's why you took the time to log in. That's why we who are here sitting in the sanctuary took the time to get up and get dressed this morning. We could have rolled over and hit that alarm button and still be asleep right now. But we're trying to get it right, y'all. We're trying to get our lives right, and it ain't easy. Sometimes we make terrible, irreversible mistakes of which we must endure the consequences. Ah, but thank God. Thank God for Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 that says, For it is by grace that you are saved through faith. Not of your own, it is a gift from God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. God's grace has made a way for us to be right. God's word has provided us with reminders of our lives to follow in. If a relationship with God is truly what we want, if that is why we are here today, then we must understand the reality that we can't have our cake and eat it too. We can't walk in two different directions and please God. One of those reminders today is found in the story of Hosea. Now, Hosea served as a prophet. For those of you who don't know, if you're just now hearing Hosea, he was a prophet and he served in the northern kingdom of Israel around the 8th century. And it was during this time that Israel started to identify with the Canaanite god named Baal. And they started to identify with Baal as being their own god. And they began visiting shrine prostitutes. Because, see, part of the Canaanite religion was that they had shrine prostitutes. When they went to the church, there was prostitutes in the church. And they followed all of their cult-like practices. So God, feeling some kind of way, here he has his people that he has worked so hard to, to, to preserve and to, and to love and to protect. Now going out and going to another God and living in a different way, but yet still trying to stay in touch with him. They were trying to have their cake and eat it too. They were trying to walk with God and walk in a different direction at the same time, which we find you cannot do. So God, to make sure that we understood and to make sure that the prophet Hosea understood just how God felt, just how God felt the fact that, that Israel had left him for somebody else. You know what he did? He had Hosea the prophet go marry a promiscuous woman named Gomer. He had him go marry a promiscuous woman named Gomer. Not only marry her, but he said, I want you to have children with her too. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he married Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. Think about it for a minute, church. 
Think about God's command to Hosea. God told him to unite himself with somebody that he knew was going to be unfaithful. Ah! Y'all think about that for a moment. Unite himself with somebody that he knew he was going to be messed up from the start. How many folks? Now, I ain't saying everybody. But how many of us here, if we would have known then what we know now, might have took a different road. Amen. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But God told Hosea, he said, I want you to go and marry that woman. And not only that, I want you to have children with her. I want you to create a lasting bond that will represent the two of you for generations to come. But why? Why would God have Hosea do such a thing? Why would God have him unite himself with somebody that he knew was going to be unfaithful? Why take something so sacred, so intimate, and intentionally set it up for failure? Well, church, that was the point. God wanted Hosea's marriage to Gomer to be a stark example of Israel's unfaithfulness to God through their worship of the Canaanite god Baal. It is a reminder of us today that God will not share our worship of him with worldly desires. Amen, somebody. But that's why we're here. Because each and every one of us, we got our own little personal Baal. Amen. Yeah, yeah. We, we got something that we, 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 we try to do that over here and still make sure that we get through the church on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. But that's all of us. That's everybody. Ain't nobody in here excluded, not even the preacher. Amen. That's why we are here so that we can get ourselves right with God and praise God that he found a way to get us right. Amen? Amen? That other direction that we are tempted to try when we're not in church, that is one of the reasons why I send everybody that morning prayer. Those of you to get that morning prayer, I said, you know what, the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I write a prayer and I send it to the folks on that text message. And I do it because I know that soon as you step your foot out of the bed, as a matter of fact, you don't even have to step your foot out of the bed. Soon as your mind starts working and thoughts start going through your head, you need some protection. You need God in your life soon as you open your eyes in the morning. Each day of our life is a moment-to-moment -moment battle of which direction shall I take? And throughout the Bible, we find passages that remind us that we can't walk in two different directions when it comes to our spiritual lives, church. When we try to do that, I'm going to tell you what we find. And, and you see it on the news. You see it all through the community. We find infidelity in marriages. Amen, somebody. We find misdirection in our own lives. We don't know which way we go. We don't know whether we're coming or going. We find hypocrisy in state and local governments. Amen. Saying they're going to do one thing and doing something else. We find church leadership that preaches one message while living another. And we find a country well, there are some who believe that Christianity and racism are compatible. Hello, somebody. That's what happens when we try to live and walk in two directions at the same time. You, you know what? Now, I'm not a basketball player by no means. I ain't even going to try to act like I am. But you know what I used to love watching back in the day was Magic Johnson when he would do that no-look pass. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all may, you know, I may be dating myself now. I done had that extra birthday. I done probably skipped past some folk. <laughs> but, but you know, when he would be, he'd be going down the court and he'd be looking over here, you know, he'd be looking over here like I'm looking over here, Ray, but then he would pass the ball back here to Sister Anamdi. You, you know, that, that, that's, how, that's how he did it. And, and some of us try to do that with God. We try to give God a no-look pass in our worship. 
See, we, we, we looking at the church, we looking at the Bible, we looking at Sunday school, but, but we doing all that so God can't see what this hand doing back here. Yeah, 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 but see, y'all don't know, God ain't fooled by the no look pass. No, he, he, matter of fact, he explains our ambivalence all through scripture. And I, let me show you here just a, just a little bit of some of the things that God has shown us in scripture that lets us know he, we can't walk in two directions at the same time when it comes to God. Starts off with Jesus. Jesus talks about, and I, and I talk about money because that's everything that's near and dear to everybody's heart, you know, and, and so, you know, when we start talking about money, you know, you know what happens? It get quiet just like it just did. Yeah, when you start talking about money, don't, don't nobody want to say nothing. But I, I'm going to tell you what Jesus said about money in the sixth chapter of Matthew. He says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money, but we sure do try, don't we? Ah, we, we give it a shot. We, we, try to, we try to make sure that, you know, that's why. How many of y'all got to get up and go to work tomorrow? Mm, oh, man. I want to grow up to be like y'all. Amen. I wish y'all at home could see how many people raise their hand. Amen. Either it's a holiday tomorrow or we got a lot of retired folk. Amen. 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 But we spend our whole life chasing money. Imagine, just imagine, if you spent as much time trying to establish a relationship with God as you did working. What your relationship with God would look like. If you spent, if you, if we spent eight hours a day, if we spent eight hours a day, five days a week for 20 years until retirement, trying to make sure that our life was right with God, imagine we'd all be preachers. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's how we talk to each other. We, we be saying some stuff to each other, y'all. You know, and, and it, it ain't all compatible either. You know, I mean, we supposed to be, you know, we are we all made in God's image, and so we supposed to be loving and kind and talk to each other in the right way, but, but you know, we don't always do that. And, and so, well, let me, let me tell you what, what James says. He says, James shares with us how we talk to each other in, in chapter 3, verse 10, when he says, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings, hello somebody, who have been made in God's image. Out of the same mouth, we pray, we sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And then we curse you out five minutes later. My brothers and sisters, it should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or grapevine bear figs? Neither can salt, can salt spring produce fresh water. But we see it all the time. We see it all the time. Folk saying one thing, you know, we, we say one thing about somebody. You know, but then we come in the church and we say this about God. We, we got to work on ourselves, amen? amen? Amen, amen. And that's all of us. I told y'all this was going to be an out sermon. Amen. Loosen up your shoes. Amen, amen. Move your toes, wiggle your toes a little bit. If they get stepped on, you'll be all right. I promise. Amen, amen. But you know, I, I think it was Paul who, who said how we feel the best, you know. And, and Paul, he was sitting down writing, and I think he got all of us right on point. When he sat down, he said, for I do not do the good I want to do. Ah, but the evil I don't want to do, I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I don't want to do, it's no longer I who do it, but it's sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me, for in my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me 
waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man am I? Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Church, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his plan for Jesus. See, God always has a plan for us. He ain't just going to leave us out there, but he's got a plan. So when you mess up, know that God has already planned for you to mess up. Amen? He already knew he was going to mess up. He said, I already knew you was going to mess up. You know, you, you know, it's like when you, you know, when you're teaching kids, you know, how to do something and, uh, you know, you're teaching them how to cook or you're teaching them how to fix something. You buy extra parts because you know they're going to mess up the first time. You know, you know they're going to they gonna break the nail or, or they're going to put too much, you know, flour in and you're going to have to throw that out and start over again. So you buy a little extra because you plan for the mistake. Thank God that he planned for our mistakes. Even in the life of the prophet Hosea, God shows us not only his displeasure with our unfaithfulness, but he also shows his grace and mercy to us as well. Amen? Though his wife Gomer was unfaithful, note what God tells Hosea to do in chapter 3. In chapter 3, this is what God tells Hosea to do with Gomer. The Lord said to me, Go show your love to your wife again. Though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress, love her as the Lord loves the Israelites. Though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes, so I bought her for 15 shekels of silver. Note that he didn't say I brought her. I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about a homer and a leaketh of barley. Then I told her, you are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man and I will behave the same way toward you. For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or household gods. Afterward, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will bring trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. Praise God, church, for his redeeming grace to us through Christ. As Hosea went and literally bought his wife Gomer back from other men that had her, Christ paid for our sins on a cross at Calvary. Hello, somebody. Which is why, as our final reminder, we read the words of John in the book of Revelation where Christ told him, he said, to the angel of the church in Laodicea, write, these are the words of the amen the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy you, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so that you can recover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they will eat with me. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. The reason why we can celebrate this morning is because just like God did with Hosea and Gomer, he does with us and Christ. He made a plan even though we mess up. And we know we'd be messing up. 
We know we be saying wrong stuff, doing wrong stuff, thinking wrong stuff, but you know what God said? You know what I want you to do? I want you to come down here to the altar on Sunday. And I want you to kneel down here at the altar on Sunday and I want you to ask for forgiveness and I want you to get your life back right with me because he said, I still love you. I never stopped loving you. So I sent my one and only son to come get you and to die for your sins so that you could be with me. God loves us, church. And he don't want us walking in two different directions. Matter of fact, we don't need to walk in two different directions. We just need to walk with Jesus. Amen? Amen. You, you know what? If, if we just walk with Jesus and, and if we open up the door of Jesus to our lives, we will see what Jesus does. I'm going to tell you all something. You know, when I first met Sister Carson, there was a song I sang. I think it, this might have been the song that wooed her. And, 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 and you know, that, that might have sealed the deal. Uh, for when, when we first met, but it's a song that reminds me of this message this morning. And while I ain't the greatest singer in the world, it was something like this. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if you please, daily walking close to thee, let it be. Dear Lord, let it be, I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, dear Lord, close to thee. Does anybody want to walk with me this morning? Does anybody want to draw closer to Jesus? That's how we get our lives right. When we open up the door to Jesus in our life and we say, Jesus, I know I ain't right. I know I've lived wrong. I want you to change me. I want you to be my personal Lord and Savior. That's why every Sunday, right after the sermon, I walk down here like I'm getting ready to do right now. And we do what we call opening up the doors of the church. What did Jesus say? He said, if you open up the door, I will come in and I will break bread with you. Is there anyone here this morning that's ready to open up the door? Some of us opened it up and then we looked and we saw who it was. We shut the door. Amen, amen. That's why they make peepholes. So when you look out there, you say, oh, no, I ain't opening up the door. Y'all, right, don't nobody say nothing. Act like you ain't at home. Sometimes we do that in our spiritual life. You know, we, we see Jesus. Why y'all bring me to church? Why y'all bring me to church? Jesus messing with me today. He's knocking on the door of my heart. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Open up the door and let him in. Those of you who are watching via live stream, if Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart right now, you don't have to be inside the building in order to accept Jesus. I hope you know that. You can accept Jesus right where you are. Your life can change right now today. And we're going to say a prayer to help you do it. And when we've done so, I want you to call Grand Amy Church Los Angeles and say, hey, I said the prayer of salvation. Amen. It don't mean that you joined up with Grant Church, it means a whole lot more than Grant Church. It means that you have saved your eternal soul by joining the household of faith in Jesus Christ. Ah, so this morning, church, as we stand around the church, there may be somebody here this morning who you don't have a church home and you're looking for a place to call home. And I tell you, them, them three G's I said this morning, great people, sure enough is. No better people like it and all of African Methodism, amen. Great worship, as you can see today, our young adults did an awesome job. And it's that way only because the God that we serve and the God that we praise is great 
in every way, shape, and form. There's none like it. We, we don't need no Canaanite gods, amen. We don't need no Baal. We don't need nothing that's been formulated with hands. We don't need nothing that you can go buy in the store. God is right here with us. The same God that helped you get out of bed this morning, the same God that lifts you up, the same God that gets you through, the same God that brought you out is the same God that we praise right here. If you're here this morning, you just need prayer. You say, Lord, I just want to open up the door again. You know, I, I want to put a door stop at the door so I can make sure you can get in whenever you need. I want to make sure that there's nothing in my life Nothing that I am doing, nothing that I have accidentally caused, Lord, to, to make you upset with me. I want the door to my life to be open, and I open it right now. And if you just want to come down to the altar and pray, I invite you to do so. And if you are looking for a Savior, I've done all that I can do. I've planted the seed. I've shared with you the message. Now it's your turn to say, Jesus... I'll accept him. Jesus, I want you in my life. Jesus, I want you to change who I am. If that's you this morning, I invite you to come down. And when you come to the altar, just lift up your hand. If you come to the altar and you want to join the church, just lift up your hand. And I will come over to you and we will do whatever we need to do to get things taken care of for you. Amen? Amen. So let us sing this morning that song that I can barely remember the words to. Just a closer walk with thee, let us see. The doors of the church are open. Just a close walk with thee. Yes, Lord. Grant it, Jesus. Sorry for the way that we've lived. 
Sorry, Lord, for every wrong that we've ever done. And right now, in the precious name of Jesus, we invite Jesus into our heart, into our life. We ask, Lord, for the blood of Jesus to be the reconciliation of our lives, to make us right with you. We accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. We ask, Lord, that you would just come in and take over. Lord, we cast aside all of the things of this world, and we ask you to take over our lives right now in Jesus' name. We thank you. We praise you. We ask, Lord, that from this day forward, that you change us with each and every step, each and every day, that we draw closer to you. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 God bless you. And for those of you who are at home, if you said that for the first time, God bless you and welcome to the household of faith. Please give us a call here at Grant so that we can celebrate with you and help you find a church home. Amen. The good thing about being on live stream and uh, you know, it's almost kind of like, you know, the way God worked. You know, back in the day, they used to think that, you know, that God was in a certain place and that it wouldn't know, that God wouldn't know where else, that God had to be in a specific area. But no, just like you don't have to be in Los Angeles to accept Jesus on this live stream right now. You can be in Louisiana right now if you wanted to and still accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because God is everywhere, amen? He is what we call omnipresent. That means he's everywhere all the time, amen? Amen, amen. praise God. I got some exciting news this morning. I've been waiting, yeah, I've been waiting, and this morning, my, my, my friends, my, my uh, former, uh, uh, former members now getting ready to be my current members again, amen, from K Memorial Bakersfield, this is Sister Brown, Sister Beverly Brown, Brother Amos Brown, amen, amen, amen. And, and you know what? You all really are coming in as transfers then. Yeah, that comes Sister Brown, she's one of my trustees, amen, amen, amen. And, and, and Brother Brown, you know, he was around there, he, he was like Brother Swartz, amen, but you know, age catch up to you. Amen, but he was like our brother Swartz there. He was running around doing everything and came. They have come today to unite with Grant Emmy Church Los Angeles. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. Go ahead and stand, amen, amen. Turn around there so folk can see you, amen. Amen, amen. They, they're not new to African Methodism. They've been AMEs for a while. They just come in here to unite. So I am proud to say, I am once again a pastor. Amen. God bless y'all. Love you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you get yeah. And and make sure, let's see, Sister Swartz over there. If you see her, she'll get your information. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. And that's one of my Marine brothers right there. Amen. 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 Him and Brother Swartz. Brother Tim, what other Marines we got in here? Hey, the Marines have landed. Amen. 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 God bless you. Uh, we're almost almost done here with those of you that can. Please stay around for that church conference. Again, I said I'm gonna keep that no longer than 30 minutes. I'm gonna time myself. That's what I like about this watch. I said it. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, so I can cut it off and be like, all right, we're done. Everybody go home. So 30, 30 minutes max, we're just gonna talk about, I wanna hear what you would like to see in your church, amen? Amen, if our ushers would come right now so we can do our offering. Again, God bless each and every one of you for your faithfulness and your stewardship and for working towards being a tithing church, amen. I'm excited about that. That means that we are growing in our faith and in our spirit, spiritual walk with God, so please continue to do what you do, amen, amen. If you would please follow the directions of these awesome ushers in the back. And if we can have some giving music, let us give as God has given to us. Amen. Amen. Let us come.
monthly, you may also take advantage of Givelify and PayPal and the other platforms that we do have. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for this offering. We thank you for the hands that gave. We thank you for those, Lord, who wanted to give and had not. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would bless this offering. Use it to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. All right. One more thing we got to do. We are growing, and that's a good thing. Amen. And one of the things that we want to do, so many people are in the church and never received a certificate. So we are trying to make sure that those of you who have been joining the church, that we get you a certificate. So this morning we have a few certificates to give out. So if Brother Moon would please come at this time, we are going to give out some certificates of membership. So when we call the name, Okay, okay. And yeah, please. Let's see. You're going to grab that microphone there. And when we call your name, if you could come up here and get your certificate. And then you can see Brother Victor there. We're going to get you, get your photograph so we can make it into a poster and hang it out in the front of the church. <laughs> <laughs> no, we ain't going to do that to you. Okay, Pastor, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we are blessed today to have, uh, uh, we have 24 members that are eligible to be read into full membership this morning. But out of the 24, uh, 14, 15 are here this, today. And that's a blessing for Amen. us. Amen. The others will be rescheduled. Some people couldn't make it today. So as I call your name, uh, if you would just come forward so the pastor can prepare to read you in the full membership. Are, are these in the, you know, these are in the order? That yes, they're in the okay, order. That's uh, the names Amen. that I call. Amen. Yes. Okay. So the, uh, the first name is, uh, this is Teresa, uh, if I could pronounce this, uh, Desventus? Okay. Yes, we come up forward. Amen. All right, Sister Teresa. And then there is uh, Corrine Ware. Brother James Harris and Patricia Harris. Thank you. Go. Amen. Uh, Lakeisha Williams. Trinity Costin. Eric O'Bannon. All right, let's go. Okay, slow up for, for just a minute, baby. <laughs> Hold up. Brother James, how you doing, sir? Good, 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 good. Let's see, what is that? Navy veteran. Amen. Right. Look at there. <laughs> Vietnam vet. Amen. All yeah, right. I think I would have just been born. Or something. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Here you go, Brother James. God bless you, sir. Okay. God bless you. Congratulations. And it's good to have you. Let me see. Here you go. Congratulations. Amen. God bless you. Give him a hand. All right. Uh, Lakeisha? Lakeisha Williams. Hey, how are you? Turn it, turn and Trinity Costa. All right, congratulations to you. Let's see. You must be Trinity. <laughs> Erica O'Bannon. All right. London McDaniels. Ah, here they come. London McDaniels. Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, who else we have? London. What's going on? How are you? Sandrika Price. Hey, baby. Sandrika Price. Right. Yes. And Erica Azeda. First shot. All right. So we're getting Sandrika hey. Price. Hey, Amen. Oh, my goodness. How you doing? Give me a hug. Welcome. Here you go. Here, everybody look. Everybody look that way for the camera. All right, all right. Sharon Williams. <laughs> Amen. Sister Erica, how you doing? Come on down. And Sharon Williams. 
Carol Hart. Amen. Turn and look at that man. Turn around. Turn around. There you go. All right, here you go. Congratulations. Have you do Sharon Williams and Harold Hart? Sharon C. Williams. Sharon. Sharon Williams. Harold Hart. Harvest Jones. Hey, Brother Hart. That's Harold Hart. How are you doing? There you go. Congratulations, sir. Vanessa Jackson. No, no, go ahead and take a look at it. And Janet Harris. All right. God bless you, sir. You must be Harvest Jones. <laughs> Vanessa Jackson and Janet Harrell. Is Janet Harrell All right, congratulations. And last but not least, we're waiting for Janet Harrell. I thought she Janet was here. Harrell. Janet's not here? All right, okay, okay. We don't see her. All right, here you go. I'll give that to you. All right, if I can get all of our uh, certificate recipients, if you could just stand for a moment so that we can all give you a great big hand. Welcome to Grand Miami Church. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. That's exciting. Amen. All right, we're going to do some more of that. So we got more folks that need certificates, so we're going to make sure that we do that again maybe once a month. We'll give out certificates. Isn't it good to be able to give out new member certificates about once a month? That's all right. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right. It is uh, time for us to close things down here. Uh, again, uh, we are going to have the church conference. We're going to take a quick vote for uh, our two men, Brother Tim and uh, Brother Steve. Then we're going to talk about our building project, and then we're going to go home. Amen. Amen. Let us stand now as we recite our affirmation of faith, also known as the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
great uh, service and the 